this is implementing third-party APIs using Fetch in JavaScript. In the last class, we were able to go to AquaWeather and get their weather APIs. What we are going to be implementing is just this top section of the page and you can do more. You should be able to add your locations. So it will be like, oh, the locations I want to be monitoring. So you can add the locations. You can add like maybe maximum of three locations. So you can add Lekki, right? You can add um, Aja. You can add some random places. So it will just be three. So we'll create that. So there will be an add button here whereby we'll say, okay, we want to pick this location. We'll type in the location there. It should give us the details and then we should be able to click add and once we add it should come like this let's go ahead we're going to be using bootstrap to help us do all these things we already have knowledge of all these things so i'm going to be fast in implementing all this one so both of them are container here this side is going to hold where we have the search section and then we have where the lecky will display and everything like that by default i want to make sure that this container has a background i can provide a generic background for our item here so let's go and get background that we can use for our weather so this is our image so let's do proper classification let's just say assets and we'll call this bg so we can move this guy inside here so let's also create our style so this is supposed to also make sure our background is set i just call it bg you can make adjustments to all these things over time to fine tune whatever it is you are doing just to make sure that what you are doing is showing you have to also link that there So you need to also specify how high you want your content to be. So you can just instead of calling this BG, let's just give it hero and that should start properly. But first of all, let me put everything to center. So cover, make sure that it uses all the background irrespective of what is happening. The next thing we want to do is to be able to create a template that once we add it, that location should come here with its own details so that section is after this column here we can create another one so this is going to be like a card let's say we have ability to add only three so we can use code four then we can add do card inside each of them let me create multiple cards so this is how our card will look like like so now our card is going to be the location that we've must have added that's what's going to denote what your card is so let's go ahead and design one of them so you can do card dash body as well each one will be too big so if i have lucky here then on the bottom i can have the country so let me change this one to maybe a normal div but i will give it class font size 4. then we want to be able to decide the icon and the degree so i want to put that in a kind of a roll and column as well what will be here will be icon then what will be on the other side will be a degree remember we also did bootstrap icon so this bootstrap icon i just need to search for the icon that i need and we are good to go just do weather here and by default these are all weather icons so you can already have the name of the icons in mind. When a parameter says something is windy, you can know that when it is windy, there is this particular icon you are going to use. Because we are building this template, we just pick one of the icons to first show us where we will end up. So after then, you can then decide you know, which one tallies or matches what the API is responding to. Because the API will tell you that, oh, this location is windy, it's sunny, it's raining. So you will now use the icon that matches that. Copy this guy and we'll put it in our app. 
So notice immediately I have that icon, we have the clock showing there. This guy has a way for us to increase the font size and that's using FS. So if you specify these guys, you will be able to increase the font size using this method. All this majorly everything here are going to be built with JavaScript. So this is how it's going to look like. Then one more thing I need to do just for fancy stuff. I need to change the card to be transparent. So it's looking better this way. We need to be able to search for locations. Like we can just throw in a location section here and search for it. If it's available, we'll add it here. Then we should be able to get the current weather information of that location. So for now, those are the two endpoints we will be calling. So it makes our work much more easier. Based on that, I will change this interface to only allow text box instead of drop down button that we already planned for. So let's go ahead and quickly change this one. So this one will be text obviously and the, the value will be blank. The ID will just be text location. So the next thing is for us to call the API to search for this location. If that location exists, it will pull the details of that information inside here. I'm going to do our text area so that we can have it and make use of it anytime we want. We will now be able to get the value. Text location of value gives us what is inside here. So the next thing we want to also get this guy, that's the button to be able to control what it does. So the button, let's see the name, let's give it a name as well. The button, it has a name and it's called button location. Okay, now I have those two things, you know, tied up like that. I want to add add events to this guy. What are we adding? We're adding click events. And what should happen when um, that is done? We want to call a function and the function should be add location info. The fetch itself is a function that allows you to go and get information using HTTP requests. So let's see how it works. You call it by saying you have the variable name called response. I want to use the keyword now, which is fetch or the function name. This is the function guys that does the magic. This is the main thing. This is why we are here. So I say fetch and this fetch guy has crazy parameters and the parameters are going to be introduced to you gradually as we go on. The limit of this class is just to use the get API part of the fetch. Uh, the fetch has quite a lot of parameters you can add to it. You can get, you can post, you can delete and what have you. So, but we're limited to just using the get for this class. Okay. The parameter requires you to pass in is the URL of where you are trying to, you know, do something with. So in this case, we want to search the location. Now look at the endpoints for this. The endpoint for this has some parameter. This is the details we got from Aqua Weather. And then it says we have to, we are doing auto search guys, because mainly you type here and you add, it will search. And if that location is available, it will add it here. But first let's search. This is the API for search. So this guy is so long that we can keep it in a variable. So normally we are supposed to put the entire URL inside here, like so. This is the entire URL, but this is so long. So we need to break it down and let's study this link very well. I will need to create a constant to hold our endpoint. I will call this one search endpoint. So I'm copying everything, even though we will need to remove some things from it. But let me first copy everything and paste inside it. So not everything is required to make the endpoint because we have to concatenate some other string to make up our full URL. At this point, you will see that we need to, okay, we're concatenating the API. That's fine. Uh, another thing I can do is to make the, okay, let me make the API part of it. So look at the part that we're passing that is supposed to be a variable. The query called Q is supposed to be a variable that can be passed to the endpoint for search. So what that means is that this needs to be dynamic, the Q part of it. So I can do this like this and say equal to waiting for me to add a parameter inside there. So you might do it any way you want. If you want to put the equal to or put the equal to when you are concatenating it, I think it's just better like this so that you just know that is the text section that you're going to apply to it. Therefore, you can then say your search endpoint will be inside this place. So instead of putting all this whole story inside here, you put this guy inside here. 
Remember that the complete form of this URL has to append the location that you are searching for. And what holds the location you are searching for is this variable here, which is text location. Then you can use your concatenation to add text location dot value. So if you inspect this result, it will come or like this original one, it will look like this in the future. Anything that you passed here is what will end up inside here as a full text. Okay, we are not done by a long shot. So what you've successfully done is that you've been able to fetch the information. So the information you fetch, it's, it's not going to do anything much because it's inside this response. There's a lot of things going on inside this response and this will introduce us to the next thing. But while we are waiting for the next thing, let's console log our results so that we'll use it to explain more things to you guys. So on console log, we get to see this. Let's search for Ibadan. And um, if we search, now look at the results. Do you see pending? There's something called promise. Just look at promise as somebody that says they want to give you something and you have to wait until he fulfill that promise that's just what it means so you have to wait for that promise to happen because now at the point whereby i say give me a data and you are saying that you are not sure if i will get it on because that's the meaning of promise if somebody promises something it's not certain that stuff is not certain look at the variable we declare here all the value we declare here they are certain that you are going to get all the information that you said you want but in promise you are not certain that those things are gonna come in so in that case you might need to provide something that you know kind of creates a form of certainty and that's where you use await and async so if you run this naturally this way it will not give you this result because the system did not wait at any point before you come and call this javascript run from top to bottom like it just run very fast there's no form of, um, there's nothing that you are telling the system that says, hey, wait for this result before you move to the next line. You didn't tell it to wait before you move to the next line. So how do you tell it to wait? It's by writing await here. So when you write await here, it tells it to wait. But when you are waiting, you need to change the function. The function needs to be changed to a synchronous function. It won't just work like this because you say await. The function itself needs to change its behavior to asynchronous. So that's where you now have this nomenclature. Await async. Await async fetch. Let me just do like key guys. So do you see the difference? Without await, you have a promise. And promise is not sure. With the await, you have a response. A response is what you need to deal with what is going on. A response is your results that gives you information. You know, it's more, um, it's surer, <laughs> if I'm allowed to use that word, than a promise. So you want to go away from promise. If you do not use await, what you get is a promise. So when you fetch, you await your result so that it will, resp it will turn it into an object of response like this. So to also get your JSON, we we'll need to also await. So let me run this and see the result, but I'm sure I need to also await the result. So let me try again and then run. So you can see that it still gives us promise. So this information is still returning a promise. So I can run await, meaning you should await this value. Await means wait for the value to come. Don't move an inch until you get the information from these resources. Remember that we are getting this information from another website. So the await is like wait for it to come before you move on. But if you do not pull await, it will just run. Boom, it will finish your, you know, it will run and finish. So nothing will happen. So we are awaiting the results. Without await, do you see what it's showing? It's showing promise. So let's do lucky now. And then now that we've put away it, it will now give us the right information, like the data. So you can now see the data. You can see the country, Nigeria, you can see all the information. And we were able to do that because at each point, we waited for our results. You wait when you're fetching, you wait when you're getting the data. The JSON is where your data resides. 
So now we know that our data should be here. We can hold it and call it search results. So these are our search results. And um, I can make all these guys constant. Constant. Another thing you need to know, our search result is an array. So now that we are done with that, we just did that with two calls, nothing so deep. Await, await, async, fetch. Those are the three things. Await, await, fetch, and the rest we are done. So the next part we want to do is, how do we add? You can see that when we added, it should add our address into, into here. So you can clear the text box. So you can do all these normal things to clear the text box when you are done adding. So what we'll do is we'll go through our build circle and where we're going to be adding the content. So it's going to be a card and this part is where we're adding all our content. You can create an ID to denote where you want your weather information to be. So I can call it weather panel. But like I usually do, remember what I did the other time? I just commented it out so that I can easily see it. So I can delete all the rest and leave one. Then I'll comment that one out so that I can steal the code and use it. I don't need to cram it. So I can just keep it here. I'll comment it. Then I'll use it to build uh, what we want to build. The HTML, we're going to build that in JavaScript. So I'm going to come in here and get access to that panel. So I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to call it the same name. I don't need to start creating new names up and down. So we have our weather panel there. So what are we doing to it? We are adding this block of code to it. This is what we are constructing. I'm looking for easy and fast way without doing so many manual adding. One of the easiest way is to create a template out of this and ability for you to inject what you want to inject inside here. Let template is equal to, so this is how you handle your string literal using this backtick and then we'll copy all this guy inside here and you are good to go. So let's format it to make it look good. And what string literal says is that you can actually substitute a live variable inside here. So instead of it holding Lecky, we can use a variable to denote what Lecky is here. This is supposed to be the location name and this is supposed to be the country. We are going to substitute that with a variable. Then once we are done, we will, this will not be a string, which will be an inner HTML for weather panel. So we can say weather panel dot inner HTML is equal to. So if I say lucky, I should see one should come. Do you see what is happening? So this is what I'm expecting. So this is working technically, not yet. It's not substituting the location for what we want to do yet. So how do we substitute this lucky guy? All our value is inside this guy. So I can do something like this. I have the string literal. This is how to, you know, denote a variable that's existing inside your string literal. So you can do this. This is an array. Uh, we are concerned about the first result of our array. This result that comes here is an array. I'm sure you saw that array there. The first result that comes out is zero. And that's what we're concerned about. And we are concerned about the name. In fact, I've forgotten the name of the, <laughs> the parameter now. So let's go and check all the endpoints, all their names, so that we can use that to do what we want to do. In that case, I'm going to remove this one so that it's not going to give us error. So we can then console log our results so that we can inspect the code there and see what we have if bad done and run. This is it here. We have the key. We are going to be needing the key. Then we also have the country. Remember that we need to use the country as well. We have the country location. So that means that to assess this guy, the localized name, you have to go first assess the variable. Then you enter into the array then dot localized name. So you have to use it the way they specify it. You can see now it's speaking the pardon. Then the next thing is we are concerned about the country as well. The country is inside a country object. And I can copy this entire thing here and go to where I specify country. So you, you paste it. Of course, instead of going through localized name, you first hit country. So when you hit country, the next thing is that is um, key value. This is key value. So how do you get to the 
key you use dot Kalai's name it gives you the value of Nigeria so I think I saw a temperature somewhere temperature is not showing here that means we need to call another endpoint and the endpoint we are going to call is this endpoint here the current weather location not just that we are going to be displaying the information on what to search for we also need to display the current weather location so let's see if this is working so let's start with Ibadan so if we do add we should have Ibadan Nigeria there so how do we get the current weather temperature how do we do that the same way we got this one so we don't need this information again I think we've harvested all the things we need for this endpoint so the same thing we did here look at how we did this guy the same thing is how we're gonna do to use to get the what the current weather location so let's start that by duplicating the first thing and i'm gonna call it so this one that we call response we can say search response so the response to your search i call it this way so this is called search response and they've got our results as search results so the same thing here you want to say weather response and you are fetching to search you're not searching for endpoints now we have a new endpoint we are calling and that endpoint is called get current location i've gone ahead to go and get these details so that to save us time so this is the endpoint and i'm going to do the same thing i did here to create another constant for us to use in our code so that our code will be pretty to look at so i will say weather endpoint in the part of the requirement of the weather is that we have to put the location key inside this is the location key so this approach might not work because there's a variable we need to inject inside so what i can do is i can terminate it here and stop so i know that this one will be a variable so once i terminate it there i need to also be able to hold the api key i can say this one is my api key which means i will need to have another variable to manage but that's fine so let's hold another variable here api key so i want to pass my api key to have all this story this is our api key i'm passing it purposely to come with all these things maybe that's not a very good approach okay let's leave it like this it means we have to append api key in whatever we are doing but this now is api key in order not for us to repeat ourselves because we've already repeat ourselves somewhere in this place i'm gonna make this one come later and inject my api key inside this code because we have an api key defined here so that it can go and represent us inside here like so now remember what the weather endpoint is to do the weather endpoint is supposed to first pass the location key there then question mark it will not do this guy so that we can get you know the endpoint of the weather so we need to reconstruct this endpoint in our code let's go ahead and implement that in our code so now that we are here we want to do weather respond so instead of us passing the search endpoint we are passing the weather endpoint the weather endpoints require key the key should be here the key is located inside search results and how do you get to the key by specifying search results the first value you see dot key capital letter k key and that gives you the key there and we are not done we then need to be able to pass our api key is equal to you know we have it as a variable so and the variable name is api key so that should work automatically so let's move on to the results how do we capture the results so you can see that i'm just doing copy and paste so these are the two formats you just need to worry about so this is now our weather results our weather result is now inside here but now we are awaiting weather response so our results should be waiting for us pretty inside here let's give it a try and see if our result is coming out well so if i do the pattern and then i search so it gave us one result let's see what the result is so you can see that of course we are getting another kind of endpoint and this one says that you can see the result says it's cloudy which is great so it says Ibadan is cloudy right now this is live result oh, this is not we're not playing <laughs> we're not playing here so this is the text the text is called cloudy remember we should be able to change the cloud or the icon of the weather so these are the things you will pass you need to create another function to check what text is it 
that's what I'm getting. Then it will determine the kind of icon to use. That's I will leave you guys to go and do that one. So we're concerned about the temperature. So you can see where the temperature is sitting. Temperature is here. We use Celsius in this part of the world. So currently Ibadan is 23.8. So now look at the deep link guys. You can see you first come through an array. So it means you first do zero. Then we'll come through an array. Then we'll go to temperature. Then we'll go to metric. Then you get to value. So let's do that guys. So we come to here. Then you will add your string put the variable name inside temperature we go to metric from there we get to value and we are done if you need any other information you can get it by looking through what it is to get through the weather icon i think it's directly after you get through the array you just pick weather icon and like i said you can use it to denote the kind of icon to show here you can see this where the icon display so you can write a function that returns different icon to you based on the weather icon in fact let me implement it quickly you can actually write a function here so you are not limited to just picking variable names so i'm about to write a long function so bear with me so i'll call that function get weather icon and this get weather icon requires a parameter of course we need to know what we're getting so it requires weather text uh, of course i'm not dumping it like this i just want to get the typing so that i can go and capture everything so the weather text depend on this so i need to pull this this so but of course we've not created this function so let's go and create this function this function should be able to return something as simple as this so it's a simple function guys so we have our switch statement that once our w is passed there to check the value uh, the value we saw cloudy now cloudy so you can read all the values available to determine what your result should be so if it's cloudy um <laughs> let me just put this one by default i've cut it now from that place so i can then do my return so it's here so if it's not so you don't need to break once you return you don't need to break again you can also return a default value like if you do not know the if you've not seen that kind of um, icon before you can return something weird so that you know you now start monitoring um, anyone you've not seen before in fact if you've not seen it before you can also use the opportunity to console log the icon and go and see the icon name so that you will go and then look for it so this console log it to just log that oh um this whatever thing you're trying to look for and i did not see but it's still in fact let, let's not let it return anything so that you see what it will say but let me just say um ah, i don't have any icon in my head but i don't know what this error will say but let's try it okay we have done quite a lot of things and it's time for us to try it out which state do i know that let me try, try abuja abuja So Abuja is also nothing is happening in Abuja. Where else can we put again? Let's say Joss. Okay, Joss. Which other place can we put? Ninja. This is the assignment. I want you guys to go and implement that. When you click, when you click on this icon or on this panel, of course, number one, limit it to three. You should only be seeing three results. If it's more than three, remove the last one. It should be only it should be seeing three results. Once you click on this item, then show the full details of the weather, you know, like a five day forecast of the weather on the bottom. So that's for you guys to go and do. Thank you for staying to the end. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and turn on the bell notification for more videos from us. See you in the next one.